answer given by teleological theory, so the good maxims, like the ones that we should adopt, are the ones that aim at producing the most good. Whatever that is, the teleological theories don't tell us what is good, and the good maxims are the ones that are going to be aiming at that. But for Kant, there's no way to identify what ends are good until we know which wills are good. And there's no way to know which wills are good until we know which maxims are good. So we can't identify the good maxims by asking if they're aiming at the good ends. That gets things backwards. But what do we know? We know that these maxims have to be the basis for value to be objective. And this means, as I say, it must be possible for everybody to value those ends specified by the good maxims. And value those ends specified by the good maxims for the same reason, namely the incentives specified by that maxim. Which just means that it has to be possible for everybody to value the same ends for the same reasons. That means it has to be possible for everybody to act on that maximum. That's what I mean by universalizability. And that's it. That's the only standard that there is for determining whether a maxim is OK, whether a maxim is permissible. So let's um, not confuse three different levels of what's going on. Uh, Um, at, the, at the most specific, uh, there are particular actions, things that an individual does in certain circumstances, giving herself certain goals or ends for certain reasons. Um, and these contents, these goals, all by, you know, specified by themselves, may be good in some circumstances, bad in others. So in a particular circumstance, somebody is aiming at something, willing some end, and that end may be good in some circumstances, bad in others. Willing that end, that person takes it to be good. It's subjective. Okay, moving up a level, there are maxims. These are principles of action, principles on which we act. These are going to be the basis on which a person wills some particular end. It's going to specify the incentive for them, why it is they take that will, that, that end to be good. This is going to be the basis of our evaluation of the person's character. This is going to be the basis on which we evaluate whether that person is a good person or not by looking at the maximum. And then finally, at the sort of highest level, is the categorical imperative. And this is the standard that we've just been talking about. This is the standard for assessing whether maxims are good. Assessing whether maxims on which people act are permissible. Um, and, and that's what here Kant is most interested identifying the categorical imperative of the supreme principle. In order to apply the supreme principle of morale to determine whether particular maxims are OK, and in order to apply particular maxims to determine which specific action and which specific circumstance one is going to undertake, each of those sort of step down, steps down from the categorical imperative to maxims maxims to particular action. Each of these is going to re require judgment as a more abstract rule or principle gets applied to a lower level. And each is often going to take in, have to take into account empirical conditions in order to figure out which action would be acting on that maxim, in order to figure out which maxim would satisfy the categorical imperative. So, it's the derivation of the supreme principle of morality that has to be a priori, not based on uh, empirical conditions. 
but the application of it to specific circumstances very often will require empirical information about the circumstances in which it is. Okay, so the last point today is this. What makes an end good? What makes a state of affairs of the world good for God? What makes it something objective for say? Well, um, the answer now, so, so all what we've been talking about is getting today, is getting away from the picture in which we first specify what ends are good, and then figure out whether a person is a good person by determining whether they're aiming at the right thing. What we're resisting the whole time today. Okay, but now we want to go in the other direction. Now we want to figure out what is it that makes an end good. And obviously, it's going to have something to do with being willed by a good will. That's, that's what we get. Okay, so what makes an end good is when it's the end that's specified by a maxim.
by actually willing that on the basis of a maximum that's permissible. Okay, but things are a little bit more complicated because um, sometimes some maxims are rational, all rationally required. Some maxims are necessary because of things. The contrary maxim is not permissible. Can't be universal. So there are so some maxims are not just permissible but are required. And that's because the contrary maxim is impermissible. Um, so there are certain ends that are good um, whether or not anybody actually wills them because they're required. They're rationally required. Um, last point though, but this doesn't mean that we can somehow first identify what those ends are and then define rational conduct based on uh, promoting them because they, those necessary ends, are derived from the requirements of rational conduct. Yeah, those maxims. Okay, um, so next time uh, I'll start by asking seeing if there are questions about this and then we'll start talking about some examples to try to illustrate which maxims are good and which are not.